Well, hello there, boys and girls. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing another channel first today. Um, over the past week and a half, two weeks, I've been running a small trap line uh, at the back of the property here where my house is at. Um, I always had a lot of ac uh, animal activity back there. Uh, foxes, coyotes, raccoons, stuff like that. So um, figured I might as well try my hand at doing some trapping and had a little bit of success over the past week. Um, had a lot more failure than I had success, but learned a lot, um, and, you know, it's something that I decided I enjoy, and I'm probably going to continue to do it uh, in the future. Uh, like I said, um, had a little bit of success over the past week, uh, caught a weasel. Um, I believe it is the long-tailed weasel uh, in northern Wisconsin here. Uh, there's four different types, or species, well, whatever you want to call them, four different types of weasels uh, in this area, and... I know it's pretty difficult to distinguish between the long-tailed and the short-tailed weasel, um, but I'm fairly certain this is a long-tailed just because of the length of the tail. Um, but that is what is in this Menards bucket right now. I uh, spent the past couple days uh, soaking it in this tanning solution. Um, I'll go over what I use for that here in a little bit, but what we're going to be doing is taking it out of the solution um, and just kind of walking through the rest of the process. We're going to get it tacked down, stretched, dried, um, and then worked into a finished fur, pelt, whatever you want to call it, I guess. Um, saved the skinning and the fleshing just because I'm sure, I mean, I don't know what the rules are with YouTube these days. Um, you know, at, at this point, none of my videos are monetized, so I guess I don't really care, but I'd rather the video not get taken down, so um, I just skipped that for now. Um, if it turns out you can still show that stuff on YouTube, then I guess I will do a video like that in the future where I show the skinning process. Um, but should say this is not my first time uh, tanning a hide. I've done several deer hides in the past and I'm using the same solution that I use for the deer hides just on a smaller scale. Um, but like I said, we'll go through that in detail in a little bit. Uh, right now I'm going to get this out of the solution, get it rinsed off, um, which is going to be great because it's like 30 degrees and snowing outside right now, but oh well. Um, and then I got to throw together a board that I can tack this down and let it stretch and dry on. So we're going to do that. All right, so this should work just fine uh, for a drying board. Um, all we're gonna do is just, once we have the uh, pelt rinsed off, um, it's still in tube form. I uh, couldn't decide if I was gonna leave it as a tube or split it, and now I decided that I'm gonna split it because uh, eventually I think I'm going to felt the backside of it and then it's gonna end up going on the wall of death in the living room. Um, so let's get to it. So there's the skin in the tanning solution. Let's see if we can zoom in on it here just a little bit and get a good look at it later anyway but um i'm pretty fond of this solution it's really simple and it seems to work really well like i said i've done multiple deer hides using uh this recipe i guess i'll call it and uh, it works fantastic never have any complaints with it it's been in there for about four days to be honest with you it looked fine after two probably could have taken it out but what this is it's about a half pound of salt uh, just regular um, non-iodized salt is what I use, um, dissolved in a gallon of hot water. So that's half a pound of salt per gallon of water. Mix that until all the salt is dissolved. Add your skin and then dissolve another pound of ammonia alum, or just alum if you're looking for it online or something like that, in another gallon of hot water. And then slowly add that to your mixture of you know salt water and, and your skins. And, and that recipe can be, you know, I guess halved or doubled or, you know, just use those quantities in, in whatever, or I should say, use that ratio in, in whatever quantity you need to cover um, the amount of skins that you have. Obviously, this is not enough to do a whole deer hide, um, but you can, you can use that ratio to make a solution that is big enough to submerge a whole deer hide in. And it, and it works pretty, pretty damn good. Um, when it's a deer hide that you're doing, um, then I would leave it in for the full day or full, full four days. But, um, when it's something smaller like this, you kind of just watch it with, you know, and then use your best judgment as to when you can take it out. There's nothing wrong with leaving it in there for the full four days. I just don't think it's hundred percent necessary. Um, 
I know I got that recipe off of a website. Um, I can't think of what it was off the top of my head because uh, it was years ago when I found it, but I will try and find it and add the link in the description. Because um, like I said, it's like it's stupid simple and I've it works fantastic. I've never had any complaints about it. Um, so anyway, now that I'm back to rambling, I'm going to get this guy out of the bucket, go rinse him off with the garden hose, and I will meet you at the drying board. Okay, there he is. One weasel. So, like I said, right now I still have him uh, in a whole, like, tube, I guess. And what I want to do is try and split it directly down the middle. So I can spread it out nicely. Um, I have never done this, obviously, with the head on. Like I said, I've only done deer skins before. Um, but in this case, I wanted to leave leave the head on. Uh, just because I thought it would look a little bit better. And you can see, you know, obviously, the tanned hide looks white like this. Everything that's darker is, uh, I guess, whatever you want to call it, stuff that was missed in the fleshing process. So I'm going to go through, like I said, once this is dry. And that will actually be pretty easy to peel off. Um, I guess if this is anything like the deer hides that I've done. Uh, in the past, so I'm really not sure if I should split this all the way up the middle. You know, I think that's might might be what I end up doing. I don't know if that's right, the right thing to do. I was at least going to split it up the middle to the arms, and then go through the arms so those would lay flat. Um, but then the skin up the jaw and everything, I almost like to leave that hole and kind of stop right here by the head. Um, but then I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get that to dry um, perfectly. I guess over time it just will dry. Maybe I could use a hair dryer or something like that. But um, I guess let's just start by splitting it right up the middle, up to the arms, and then we'll go from there um, if we decide we want to go a little bit further, I guess. So um, I'm just going to be using these game shears for this. I don't really know if there's a better option out there, but... This seems like it should work all right. And I spilled two to it, so that's not going to work very well at all. So I'm going to grab a knife. Uh, so I apologize if my fat head is going to block the shot, but... Um, just want to make sure that I get this right. Okay, so there's the preliminary result after just splitting the hide. Uh, I'm going to get it flipped over now. Yeah, there you can totally see what I'm doing with my hands, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get it flipped over and then uh, tacked down. And then it's just going to have to dry until uh, it's dry. And then at that point, we can go through it with a comb. Um, and, you know, I think once I get it worked into leather, um, I want to kind of either super glue or sew up some of the holes that are in the hide. Uh, dispatched him with a 1022 so he does have two holes in him um, but I think we'll be able to take care of that easy enough uh, and then after that like I said I think we're gonna felt the back side of it and then it'll go up on the wall in the living room um, at this point and I'm not doing this to trap a bunch of furs and sell them for money I kind of just enjoy it like I do hunting and yeah, it is what it is I guess <laughs> but all right let's uh let's keep going
Okay, ladies and gents, there he is. One stretched weasel. I uh, wasn't 100% sure what to do up at the head area there. Um, didn't want to drive nails through both sides of the skin, so um, just have two kind of holding his head up there uh, through the eye sockets, I guess. And um, we'll just have to see how that turns out. Not 100% confident that it's going to turn out great, but uh, we'll just see what happens here as it dries. And then some of those um, darker spots that you see on the hide there, uh, like I said, once it's dried out, we can kind of scrape those and we'll be able to get some of that off. And some of it is just blood staining. So once this dries, uh, we'll have to rub in a couple coats of what they call fat liquor oil. And when we get to that point, I'll give you the recipe. Uh, but I believe just off the top of my head, it's three and a half ounces of neat's foot oil, uh, three and a half ounces of warm water, and one ounce of ammonia. Uh, again, pretty simple, and I've had good results with it uh, with the deer hides and turning those into leather. Um, so I'm assuming it's going to work pretty well for this. So we'll just have to wait and find out, I guess. Um, so for now, this is going to go stand in the basement and dry. Um, I imagine it'll take probably, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four days to dry fully. So um, we'll pick back up at that point in time. So it's a few days later now. Uh, the hide has had probably about three days to dry, I think. And as you can see here, I skipped filming a few steps in the process. Um, my meticulousness and inexperience kind of got the best of me. Um, most of what I did got to be kind of too long and boring to film, and I don't think it would have been very helpful for anyone um, trying to do this themselves. And to be honest, I wasn't even going to post this video because uh, <laughs> I had such a, a hard time doing this weasel compared to the deer hides that I've done in the past. Um, that it just, I mean, it just, I'll show you what it looks like here in a little bit, but um, it didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to. Um, and like I said, wasn't really even planning on posting the video, but um, figured maybe one day I would uh, get decent at this and want to look back at where I came from. So um, I'll just kind of outline the steps that I took, at least from where we picked up or left off, I should say, uh, out in the garage. So after um, I had the hide stretched on the board here, um, I let it dry for the better part of three days um, and then rubbed in a coat of what they call fat liquor oil and that's this mixture over here in this bin and I looked up the recipe that is three and a half ounces of neat's foot oil three and a half ounces of warm water and one ounce of ammonia just regular old cleaning ammonia that you can get um, at like Walmart or something like that but um, so anyway after I worked that in um, I let that sit covered in plastic over a night overnight so I actually let the hide dry for two days, it rubbed that mixture in at the end of the second day, and then let it sit overnight into the third day. Um, and that's kind of where we're at now. Um, so at that point, I took the hide off the board, uh, rinsed it off, and then, I guess, whatever you want to call it, broke it. Uh, just kind of worked it back and forth over a soft plastic edge, uh, actually in a, a slop, slop sink down here in the laundry room. Um, and just kind of worked it so it wasn't so stiff. And then at that point, I just used my uh, X-Acto knife um, to kind of trim up the edges a little bit. Uh, so I guess let's go take a look at the finished product. So here it is. Um, to be honest, it looks a little bit better on camera than it does in person. Um, if it weren't for the two <laughs> bullet holes, um, I'd be pretty happy with it, I think. Um, and the ears are intact. Yeah, kind of a close up here. Try to anyway. Come on, camera. There you go. Uh, the nose and whiskers, everything's still there. Um, the, the leather side did turn out pretty good. I'll maybe try and get you a shot of that here. Uh, I combed the fur out, and that that turned out pretty well. Um, I really, I don't really have too many complaints, I guess, honestly, other than those couple of bullet holes. Um, and I went with this sort of display, I guess, because having it sort of splayed out, and like I had originally said, I kind of wanted to felt the backside and uh, leave it out with the arms and legs and everything. Um, it just it didn't look right. Um, when I stretched it, it got kind of uneven on one side compared to the other, and if you look back at uh, how I had it stretch out in the shop, uh, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about. But I guess that's sort of the uh, importance of using an actual stretcher board instead of just nailing it down like I did. Uh, this works, but it's probably not the ideal way of doing it. 
but um, for my first time, you know, like I said, I'm happy. It, it could have gone a lot better. Um, I almost wish that I would have taken the whole thing into a taxidermist and got it mounted, but oh well. Maybe next time I'm sure I'll catch another one. This probably won't be the last one. All in all, I guess I'm glad I tried it. I uh, learned a few things. I know what not to do next time, I guess, at least in the stretching process. Um, I am very happy with how it turned out uh, when I skinned it, scun it, whatever. Um, I thought I was going to have quite a bit more difficulty doing that, but picking up that um, hobby knife set from Harbor Freight was a win for sure. That made skinning it out a lot easier. But um, Yeah, I guess whenever we get caught on the trap line next, maybe we'll try this again and uh, see if we can do it a little bit better next time. Um, maybe I'll try a, a raccoon or something like that. Maybe even a squirrel just to get some practice in because, I mean, eventually the goal is to get good at this. Um, not trapping for money, just trapping for fun at the moment, but... Alright, I guess that's it for now. Uh, any questions on the recipe that I used for tanning, just let me know down in the comments. I will try and link that website with the information on it that I used. Um, but, yeah, thanks for sticking around to the end. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.